Hi, I'm Vera Drew. And I'm Ember Knight. And welcome, welcome to, to Jackass. Jackass. I almost said I'm Ember Knight. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. <laughs> that was the closest we've ever come to that feeling like a professional introduction. And with us today is our very good friend, uh, Sarah Squirm. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hi Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Squirm, and welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass, Sarah. Um, have you ever talked about Jackass before on a podcast? Um, I. It's my only thing that I have to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm doing a podcast, it might come up. Huh. 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 We had a similar idea. (laughs) We're talking about it once a week now. That's Um, smart. Designate some time for church. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Church is really just two two or three people talking. That's what I always say. Two little jackets. Exactly. (laughs) Um, what is your history with the show? Did you did you grow up watching it? Has it influenced your your comedy or your writing or your your life in any in g- any in, way? In any grand way? No, not at all. No, <laughs> I I actually didn't watch it as a teenager because I was like, oh, that's not, you know, it didn't seem like, seems like a hostile space for like Jewish girls, but that was like a preconceived notion in my head. I'm like, this show isn't for me. It's for boys who ride skateboards and I, they wouldn't like me, but that's just, that was a roadblock I put in my own head for myself. And then when I was like 19 or so, I was like, I don't know why. Oh, I sought it out like right before Trump became president. So I wasn't 19. I was what, like 45? I can't, I don't know. <laughs> Back then? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, like 100. But I remember it was like Trump was going to be president and I was like depressed. And so I just like watched really? every single piece of jackass um, <laughs> media I could find. That's great. I was I was just I I, I tweeted this today. So sorry, I'm recycling uh, grade A material. But uh, when when Trump won, I watched every John Waters movie in practically one sitting. And it like purged it all. And like, I, it was a very similar thing where like, I like appreciated John Waters from afar. But then like, that was my initiation into like, oh, yeah, no, this is for me. Mm hmm. This is yeah. this filth is for just me. like absurd. I think that's it. yeah. It was like a very absurd time. So it was just like, what's the stupidest? I think a lot of comedy, like right before Trump, was very you know it was like his his weird little hands, and it's like enough. <laughs> yeah. I just want to watch something that's actually funny. That's just people having fun with their friends. Yeah, yeah. That's just like. <laughs> And I think that's like why we like doing this show because it's just like I mean we're talking about we're talking about reality now, but like what really has I've I've I'm just obsessed with the friendship in this show and the positivity. Yeah. I don't know if you know the story, but Bobby and I literally became friends on election night in 2016 because I had been in one of his films and it was screening on election night at Nerd Melt. And the whole show was set up around, like, the assumption that Hillary was going to win. Oh, no. And, like, right during, like, the first comic being on stage is when everybody was looking at their phones getting the news. So, like, everybody had Hillary jokes, like, lined up and and had to just, like, kind of go through with their material. And then Bobby screened this, like, sad movie he had made that I starred in. And we spent the evening, like, sitting in the alley, like, throwing clumps of dirt. So we like watched that era of comedy die in that's its beautiful. In real time. But that's like, I mean, that is like a, a very justified death. Yeah. <laughs> a very just killing that you both witnessed. Those comics got what they deserved. <laughs> well, it's so funny because it's like uh, that didn't even die. It, you know I what know. I mean? It's like. I was going to say the small hands thing especially feels like it's like. But I don't know. I mean, we're actually recording. This is like, we're kind of caught up now and like when episodes are airing because we had a couple backlogged, but we're recording this right after it seems like 
the rest of the people have figured out that the world's falling apart finally. <laughs> I hope. Um, so maybe comedy will actually finally get better. Punk music definitely won't because the dead Kennedys uh, like Mick, Mitt Romney apparently. Oh, is that true? Yeah, that oh, was some man. new. That was some new information that came out this week. Don't worry, the Eve Six guy is on Twitter, and he's one of us. <laughs> we got him. I'll take him. Um, well, that's. I mean, do you think? Uh, well, let's just dive into the show. What we watched tonight. We watched an illegal version of Jackass tonight, which is kind of like I don't know. There's something like even more jackassy about that. I think. It's a premonition. Censorship is back, baby. Oh, big time. <laughs> <laughs> we watched the top two thirds of the yes. screen. Yeah. yeah, it was. I mean, we should just share. We can share the YouTube link in, in the. Oh, yeah. We might as well just share the YouTube. This actually probably should be just how we watch <laughs> the show now. It's. I mean, it's a little ironic because most of what happens that's funny in Jackass is right below the belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we should say it was like cropped, uh, like it, it was almost like watching like an experimental, it added, it added like a high art. It left element. a lot to the imagination. Yeah, it was basically, it was the anamorphic version of Jackass. Uh, the first sketch we watched was called Bikini, I, I think, because again, the title was cut off at the bottom. Um, but this was Johnny Knoxville covering his, his, his private parts in Bees. And this is one of those moments where, oh, people say, oh, jackass is stupid. Oh, it's just dumb guys, you know, hitting themselves in the balls with hammers. And this is where I say we have the most advanced level of storytelling happening here, where the name (laughs) of the stunt is a pun. It's already a hilarious joke. And then it comes to life and it becomes a four dimensional experience. So anyone who says the show is stupid isn't seeing the interdimensional chess game that's going on between Johnny Knoxville's balls and taint in that sketch. Exactly. And, and his doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, he consulted his doctor before the sketch, which again is like, that's dedication to craft. This is classic jackass storytelling technique. Even if the bit is really good, it's like five times better because there's a setup that contextualizes it, whether that setup is the shot of a used condom on the ground or a call to your doctor <laughs> telling you to definitely not do what you're doing. Yeah, because she did tell him not to do it, I guess. Like he was <laughs> he was testing to see if he was allergic to bees, which is irrelevant if you have 75,000 bees on your on your ball and taint area. And didn't she say, leave the stinger in? She did. Which is, do you take it out when you get stung by a bee? She was like, whatever you do, just leave the stinger in. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't, I guess I don't know what the appropriate response is to a bee sting. This doctor had the tone of voice of somebody who has been called by Johnny Knoxville before. (laughs) On his flip phone. Sure. So I think that she consolidated everything she had learned in her medical process into one sentence that she thought he would hopefully remember. And just like, she probably imagined that he would brush them off and that would push the poison in further. So she was probably trying to give him one phrase that would keep him alive. That makes sense. You know? It It didn't appear that he got stung at all, which is actually very impressive. He's very calm. Yeah, because the beekeeper has this like familial, like father son relationship with all of these bees. They were incredibly like non aggressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was there, them with love. You know, there were a lot of um, the in the sketches we watched tonight. There were a lot of intergenerational themes that popped up. I think because later we saw. I mean, the the beekeeper whose name was Norm. Um, which my favorite part was Johnny Knoxville reassuring his doctor that it's okay because Norm's there. Uh, (laughs) But uh, there was also a sketch later in the night where Johnny Knoxville was bringing his grandmother, Dottie, to potentially get stuffed by a taxidermist. Stuffed and mounted. Stuffed and mounted. Uh, (laughs) Do you you find, because you seem like you're a jackass scholar... Do you find these these intergenerational themes uh, throughout a lot of the stunts? I mean, 
of course, we have Magnum Opus, Bad Grandpa, which <laughs> is a love letter to old people being funny. The, great, okay? the greatest generation in general, I think, too. Absolutely. And, oh, Johnny Knoxville dressed up as an old guy getting his penis stuck in a vending machine? What could be... I mean, that's we're talking Oscars here. I would that's an say Oscar snub. Johnny Knoxville loves old people more maybe more than anyone alive he loves old art he loves uh old movies he loves old cartoons he loves old music he loves the soundtrack to breakfast at tiffany's uh (laughs) this is a guy that loves old stuff like one of the things i wrote down for that um sketch was crank yankers like he has a real love for like prank phone like classic prank phone calls and you can see that in his sketches they're like real life versions of I don't know, just like some really classic redneck humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has a reverence for death. I mean, the the coffin <laughs> coming he? out of the hearse. Come on. These yeah. guys are dancing on the razor's, razor's edge between life and death constantly. <laughs> and that's what we need in Western civilization, a more of an exploration and a better understanding of death and the great beyond, which Johnny Knoxville tackles every day in his jackass mm performance art pieces and just across across the generations i mean i'm sorry to keep keep going back to this point but i I mean i just i just see a lot of like so what boomer fuck you gen xer like across all like on the internet especially right now um i just think this show is bringing it's bringing the i just love and it's it's like what i love about when they actually involve old people in stunts there's something just so special about watching an old lady be in on a joke like that to me. i thought it she ruined the prank though you what because i thought here's the thing I'm, I'm a harsh critic i think she fucked up the prank a little because they they lost a good bit when uh in the second taxidermy shop they were like asking them about like the preservation process of like scooping out internal organs and stuffing. And the old lady was like, I don't want to hear that, you know, and, and the joke was like, you know, I don't want to hear about all the like horrible blasphemous things you're going to do to my body after I've shuffled off this mortal coil. But it would have been better if we got to hear what the taxidermists do to the, your innards when they stuff you. Yeah, that I do agree with. That I and I wonder I wonder how much of that if if she was if that was general discomfort or if that was just a bad yes and. I also was wondering watching that sketch how much Johnny Knoxville thinks about what he's gonna say before going into something versus like just having an instinct for needling. <laughs> and she, I think he's pure libido. <laughs> I think so too, and that would explain why like she wasn't really prepared and might have been like overcompensating or trying to play the part, you know. Maybe not the best performance. Maybe it didn't get to go as far, but she was probably like, I mean, he's very good at making everyone around him feel super uncomfortable on purpose. So I'm sure she probably felt some of that. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. I thought it was interesting that everyone kept saying, like, we're not sure about the legality of this. I'm like, why would it be illegal? If you sign up for it. I think it is because there's actually really strict rules about what you can do with a corpse. There there are, yeah. You, you're supposed to have to be buried in a box. Like, you can't be buried straight into the ground. There's, like, all kinds of really dumb rules about corpses. Sorry to break your bubble, Sarah. I, I... I think a lot of it, too... <laughs> I know I, it's bullshit. I don't know anything about this, but I think a lot of it, too, is just it's all, it's all like, big funeral st- like like Yeah, like, it's industry. It's yeah, big funeral... It's yeah. It is be- well, but I'm like because I mean it it's it's like they because you know we used to have funerals in homes and stuff and then like I I I, I feel like I read this but I also could have dreamt this it's funeral or homes, but I'm, it's, it's funeral a podcast parlors, so it's... they they they're like encouraging they're spreading propaganda that like the human body immediately becomes like a, an infectious diseased ridden disgusting thing the moment after you die, and that's just simply not the case. Yeah. You could stuff it a human It does safely. emit fumes, though. If you don't stuff, if you don't gut it and stuff it properly. And if, but if you were gonna, if you were gonna stuff, like, let's say, let's say you were gonna stuff your grandma. Your grandma was totally like, I want you to stuff me. 
Um, Which she should have said, and I kind of agree now, if she had come in wanting it and Johnny was just like the nice like grandson trying to fulfill her wish... <laughs> It's that would have been better. This is probably one of the 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 stunts that made them realize they need to just dress up like old people. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, they have more control. It could have been Chris. That could have been the yeah, grandma. That's true. Or, Chris or can be any character he wants to be. Chris can be my boyfriend if he wants to be. If Chris can do if anything. If Chris he wants. dressed up like an old lady, I would come the moment I saw him. <laughs> old lady Chris can get it for sure. <laughs> Um, I liked when they were talking about curing the skin. They were like, we wouldn't know how to cure human skin. Hmm. Well, that would be, that. that's my question. But I also think, I think, I don't know. I, oh, what I was going to say was before was, I think if you were like willingly going to stuff yourself, you would take every precaution necessary. You would take, you would take a shit before you die. Because you always shit when you die. Like... Just to, I'm sorry to go back to that point, but I, mean, I it, no. I, if I was gonna clean a body <laughs> and stuff it, I wouldn't mind also cleaning the shit out. Yeah, it's just part. Of, it's just part it's of the process, and I imagine it. that's part of the taxidermy process as well. I just don't understand if you're walking in there in front of the eyes of God and everyone, saying, "I want this to happen to my body." Why would it be illegal? I mean, that question could be applied to a lot of bullshit in our culture. Yes, all over the place. Yeah, you gotta go to you gotta go to Sweden or whatever to get yeah. euthanized. You gotta go. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get in. A, I don't want to get in a lot of hot water uh, to compare <laughs> the trans experience to this. But um, let's go. <laughs> it's quite simple, like, you know. Like getting getting making a vol- getting a voluntary surgery that will improve your life can be can can be hard to convince people to give to you. Can it? Yeah. <laughs> a little. <laughs> so I can only imagine how hard it'd be to get stuffed. To get stuffed and yeah. mounted. Yeah, to stuffed <laughs> in a tasteful position for the grandchildren to <laughs> was the request. Um, I have a question. You written you wrote on the new season of Eric Andre show. Yes. Did you did, did you write? Did you? <laughs> yes. Um, do you do you have you written a lot of pranks in your life? Um, my parents were pranksters. Like growing up, I for some reason I was afraid. I had a phobia of slugs because like. One time I stepped on one and it got in between my toes Mm -hmm. and then I was afraid of them ever since. And so my parents thought it would be funny if they captured slugs in cups and put them around my room, put them in my bed. Oh, ha ha. Really funny. We're laughing. We're not because it's mean. So, so there's been a spirit of prank within me. The, The demon spirit of pranks within me ever since. That's so weird. There was a snail in one of my smoothies as a kid and I thought it was a chunk of banana. Oh. And so now if there's a chunk of banana in my smoothie, like I'll I'll think I'm gonna puke. Why did that happen? I don't I think that I think the cup was left outside and my mom didn't think she just saw it on the step and like picked it up and poured my smoothie into it. <sighs> that I don't know because I was five, but there was a snail. How far Bad. did you did it make it into your mouth? Ma- it made it into your mouth. It made it into my mouth. Did you you didn't swallow it? No. I didn't crunch on it. I just encountered it. Oh, my God. Not right. Not right at all. (laughs) And everything you see before you is evidence. So the story is true. I mean, my parents made (laughs) my parents made a lot of mistakes, but they never willingly put a snail in front of me. I don't think she willingly. Oh, no. Or I was going to say or that, too, because that's that's I lucked out on both fronts. Um, and you're clearly perfect and have no problems. <laughs> no, yeah, everything worked out for me. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's always like, why do you have to make gro- gross stuff? Why can't you be normal and beautiful? And I'm like, you did this. You <laughs> yeah, no, did this. They, don't, they don't get that. They don't understand that. I, I had a lot, like, that's been a large theme with my mother is, like, really just explaining to her, like, the reason I... Like, and she's creative. She paints and she's like a wonderful painter and like a great artist. So I I would assume she'd understand it, but she's like a classical painter. And I, 
add fart sound effects to people blinking their eyes and <laughs> make illegal Joker movies. <laughs> My mom literally make like makes sculptures of naked pregnant women. Like that's her that's her jam. And my when I put out my first album, it was like a picture where I am topless. And this bitch called me sobbing. She called me and was like, "Can you just tell me why?" Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, no! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> what is it with moms? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I'm moms and welcome to Jackass. <laughs> That's where all of us intersect. <laughs> we should have both of our moms on this show at some <laughs> point. <laughs> um, I think not together, because again, I think the world would end. Well, I, we said that. On, what I if know. we're not here and Sarah interviews our moms? I would like that. <laughs> can we, Bobby? So can you set that up? Your daughters are up to no good. How do you feel? <laughs> um, kind of a bit of a Doctor Phil. <laughs> <laughs> would you host a show like that? Um, like a Murray, where I terrorize and exploit people's uh, <laughs> intergenerational trauma. Yeah, call it therapy. Yeah, <laughs> you would be the best version of that, though, Sarah Squirm. <laughs> so, um, I just found out about uh, this term, uh, codependency. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it to the test. <laughs> what did you guys do to ruin your children? <laughs> You're just as qualified, I think. I think we all uh, are. <laughs> just as qual- I think anybody can do those. I I used to really love um, Mari the most. I think I, I think he was the one, and his was mostly paternity tests. Oh yeah. But every day after school was Jerry Springer and Jackass. That was that was. Did I say Murray earlier? You said Murray. I said Murray. Clearly, I've not watched that show. <laughs> <laughs> Who had the Catch Me Outside? How about Dad Girl on it? <laughs> That was Dr. Phil? Yeah. Bobby says Dr. Phil. He's our fact. God bless. Right? I mean, God bless. Catch me outside. How about that? True. Those shows have put some real superstars into the canon. That's for I sure. I agree. I agree. Oh, speaking of which, um, I should send this to you. Our good friend Dino revealed a juicy tidbit about a character he used to do on Conan where he would he was dressed in a giant ostrich costume and would storm the stage and like peck all of the cameramen and then lay an egg that was a real egg. But when you open the egg, it also it's like covered in yolk, but there's a piece of paper with the next day's guest. Oh, wow. And and we found a video of him like attacking and screaming at Mickey Rooney. So jealous. I know. It's like that's exact that's what I want in show that's what I want to do in show business. <laughs> I want to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> that's my I dream. Went, went, I wrote on the Eric Eric Andre show for like two weeks, barely. That counts. And I was really bad at pitching pranks. What? Because there's because you have to think like 89 steps ahead of people. And they're so well constructed. You have to be so good at uh emotionally and physically manipulating people and i guess i'm just too kind of spirit you have too much (laughs) empathy i think you really just have to basically go for it and also not be afraid of your physical well-being in any way shape or form Mm. yeah i i'm not built i'm not built for any i feel like i could dress up like an ostrich i mean not to i don't think i can do what dino does i think you can i think i of that <laughs> level of like fucking with people i think i can do that but like i don't know especially like what eric does like eric really pu- punishes his body especially this last season i got to cut the only i i i mean i watched every episode but the other reason i knew you wrote on it was because i edited behind the scenes and watched hours and hours of comedians riffing uh in a a writer's room but like the craziest thing about watching all that footage was like really watching what eric like puts his body through and stuff and like i would never i would never do anything like that like i mean there's something to be said for like 
sometimes when somebody corners a market so well, it doesn't mean you need to compete with it. It just means you can be like, oh, good. Somebody else did that part of this idea. And like maybe a show that was written by Sarah would be really incredible prank wise. And it just would be not the same as Eric Andre. And if it was the same as Eric Andre, then that would suck. It's just I a- tried to do a, a <laughs> in Chicago. I, I tried to do this jackass prank on myself. Where I <laughs> This is the longest story I ever told. Please, please tell me. I was it. like you know I was like a you know, I was a Jackass fan, I'm an Eric Andre fan, whatever. Jackass was like coming to town. It's the most boring story I ever told. It was, Jackass was coming to town. This was like four years ago in Chicago at the bottom lounge. I'm like, okay, I know people who work there. I'll get into the meet and greet line and I'll get Chris Pontius to do this prank where he punches me in the tit I know and this my story. boob explodes. <laughs> you know the story already? Yes. <laughs> I don't Did know I it. Did I tell this to you already? Yes. <laughs> On this podcast? <laughs> Did I do this podcast already? Uh, no, go on. Go on. It's just, it's humiliating. They just hate, I, they punched whatever. And I was like, I built this big fake boob that was, that had this like mechanism that would, you know, it was like basically a water balloon full of blood basically. Yep. But it was like weirdly complicated paper mache, whatever. <laughs> Obviously when I showed up to the meet and greet after three hours waiting in line, nobody wanted to do it. And they were like, we're not punching a woman. You're insane. You're an insane person. We're famous. Please leave. Have this all on tape. It's humiliating. And then whatever. (laughs) Then later, I was like, why don't we just try out this boob thing? I had my friend punch me in the tit. It exploded. It worked. Whatever. That's their fault. And then, like, days later. What? That's their fault. They missed out on a good time. No, they didn't. Because I had my friend punch me in the boob. Days later, there's blood gushing out of my nipple. I forgot that I asked my friend to punch me in the tit. <laughs> there's blood gushing for hours. I go to the hospital. They're like, this is breast cancer. Oh, no. Really? Oh, no. I must have I get, tuned out get, before the end of this story last time. You told it at a show a while ago, and I was not listening to the end. <laughs> But, well, they, it's not, they were like, you're, we don't know why your nipple would be gushing blood. That's a sign of breast cancer. And I'm like, oh my God, I have breast cancer. And I call my mom and I'm like, my, they, they are, I have to get these x-rays because they think it's breast cancer. And she's like, well, did you do anything to cause? <laughs> I was like, yes, I had someone punch me in the tit. I completely forgot. <laughs> They do the and x-rays had, like, and there's a toy car in there. Dollars. What? They do the x-rays and there's a toy car. <laughs> they did. Yeah. They did the x-ray and it was poop volcano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did the x-ray and they were like, yeah, you burst blood vessels because of a high impact situation. Yeah. And in in my in boobs, there's like debris and chunks floating around in there. What? So like mm-hmm. Boobs sometimes have just like weird like blood vessels and chunks of flesh and sinew and tissue. Oh. And so apparently when I got punched, like it some piece of like flesh debris (laughs) hit a blood vessel that caused it to like gush blood out of the areola spout. It's like whatever, I never paid my hospital bill. (laughs) You never paid your hospital bill. And I didn't go back to be like, because they were like, well, it's not, we don't see any cancerous tumors. And I was like, yeah, weird. I gotta go. That's, wow. That is so, that is, I mean, thank you for sharing that. That is, that's. Well, all this to say, I would never do what Eric does because I got fucking bitten the ass the hard way. <laughs> on, on like six different levels too. Yeah. Do you, you still have video of the prank not working? Have you ever shown it? Have you ever, like, done anything with it? I've shown it in a show and being like, 
in the context of like, I tried to do a jackass for girls. Son. I tried to, you know, queer the narrative of jackass and look what ended up happening. I'm the, I'm the jackass now, you know, whatever. And uh, everyone in the audience was just really sad. They're like, this is yeah. a bummer. Because now they, they're just watching footage of Chris bon- Pontius being like, you're insane. Like my literal hero being like, you're an insane person. I want, I don't want anything to do with you. You're psychotic. Please leave. Which I is this, true. This is like such though, like a specific, because I don't know, did you do this like with your heroes? Like have fantasies that you would meet them yeah. and be able to, in the span of like two minutes, do something that both impresses them and says, we are the same, we should be best friends. But within the context of that you waited in line to meet them at a fan meet and greet. And it's an impossible scenario. There's nothing you could ever do that would make them be like, oh, you and me are equal. We're the same. We should hang out. <laughs> It's it's not no, it's just yeah. yeah. Well, especially I at like was a, a meeting. Meet right. But yeah, right. I I I don't well, I I I think it's so sweet that you thought it would have that you thought it would have worked and I can and I'm glad I'm glad the I mean, I think maybe this is maybe just looking at a glass half full. It sounds like a very humiliating experience, but um I think you should be happy that the boob squib worked. Sort of sort of well, do you want to hear the real? You want to hear my real tea? Want to hear my real scoop tea? We want to hear the tea. Day, That's what this show's all there about. Was, there was they 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 were doing writers' rooms for the new Jackass, and they did like a mini like one day five hour writers' room with some Eric Andre writers for the new Jackass, and Eric knew that it's my favorite thing. So it was like some Eric Andre people, and then Johnny Knoxville. I'm sitting there like sweat circles down to my ass yeah. afraid to talk and every time i pitch something like i was like what if steve-o did a swirly with diarrhea in the toilet johnny knoxville was like oh that's gross i was like coming from you <laughs> johnny knoxville thinks everything he does is like beautiful fashion <laughs> i mean he looks and he looks beautiful fashion i'll tell you what he's i know amazing that's what I was thinking when he had that diaper covered in bees. I was like, this is something that I would see on a Vogue Instagram post. <laughs> like a beautiful model where like it's beautiful bees covering their crotch. Yeah. Or like at an Emmy party or so, like yeah. some sort of like eccentric billionaires yeah. like party. There's just naked women covered in bees. <laughs> some like Jeffrey Epstein sex cabal. <laughs> yeah. You know but like mean? our version. <laughs> Cause it's I like all of the diaper, the diaper sketches. You get crawfish diaper. There's other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember crawfish diaper. Oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I-, I was thinking with the one today where they were doing the lawnmower naked. Oh yeah, that was yeah. like very. That's the kind of stuff that I. That's where my work intersects with Jackass. Yeah, you could do that in is a like, heartbeat. Like yeah, that, but... you know, that was the Ember's etiquette, like driving naked, and you just like pass a mailman, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> you know, and but but your body is not on the line in that way, up for criticism, but not up for for um oh paper you cuts. You couldn't pay me forty eight million dollars to be naked in public. Really. I don't. I don't know why. That is what. A, that's a big fear. Just like a childhood. Like I'm standing in front of the room and I'm naked and everyone's yeah. laughing, kind of thing. Yeah. I, well, that makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. No, I think what you do is <laughs> um, makes me feel like less of a hack. Like the embers etiquette stuff. Like. No, I thought that's... we had to go literally onto the freeway for anyone to think it was cool. Well, I get that part of it too. That's you wanting to push yourself harder, yeah. which is also important. But I think, I don't know, I think there's also something more, not to put down what you do, but I think there's something slightly go. more vulnerable about just being bottomless. <laughs> like, I think, I almost think, especially like a dude bottomless, like just hanging, like, like it's, I think that's like the funniest Winnie thing in the, the world. Pooh. Yeah, the Winnie yeah, the Pooh. Yeah, the Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes people mad to... Um, if you do that and you're a girl, I know for firsthand experience, because it's not sexy. They don't want to get the full pussy, but not anything else. No one likes that. If you have just like a shirt and a jacket on and you pull everything down. No. Yeah. I don't know why I made it about gender. I think it is, it is just very like almost unsettling if it's anybody. Nobody wants the the risky business look. 
But it's so weird because, like, you know, you like genitals are like what we you know it's what we're all trying to get to but i guess when it's just alone in that context it's it's off-putting it's too you, you don't you want the chase you don't actually want the wish fulfillment that's that could that could be said about a lot of things i think um well we need to wrap up uh right kind of know. it's well, been an hour sure yeah not that i want to leave Bobby says we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> started late, so it hasn't oh, okay. Oh, hasn't okay. Probably been okay, high. Bobby, male silencing the female narrative. What a dick. As usual. What a jerk. Do oh, you- let's talk. Let's talk. Um, idiot launch real quick, because this is this is one they've done other times. It's gonna work. It took a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. It's gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 a total Looney Tunes bit getting like human slingshot basically, and yeah, Bam Margera is convinced it's going to work because it took them a long time to set up. Bam <laughs> is the one who has a mind for drawing a little cartoon in his school notebook <laughs> that is like a body going somewhere, and they literally show that in one of the movies. But I think that's how he writes a lot of his ideas. He's like, and there's you engineering. <laughs> There's the cartoon drawing, and then there's elaborate engineering, as we've right. seen. It took them a long time to construct that. Yeah. It's your algebra book. It's your little mini skateboard, and you draw what's going to happen. Yeah. it's Yeah, no, it's like Wile E. Coyote with, like, the, the plans, acne plans. Yeah. But and it didn't actually work no. the, this time. It did not work. Well, it worked the last time, I guess, kind of, but... But they couldn't, they weren't, they kept dragging their feet. It was the way it was built. It looked like it was actually pretty well built, but they, they had the slingshot. The actual rubber was connected to the wrong part. It should have been connected to their butt. To the butt. Because their center of gravity. And I said it in the middle uh, of the sketch. It would have worked if it was connected to the butt, which is like something I think you could apply to a lot of these sketches. Yeah. Period. But with this one specifically, because their center but of gravity But if it was, was connected off. to the butt, Gotta pull we up wouldn't the have gotten the release into the body of water right you you got to put all of your uh investment into the butt keep the feet up trust your friends to hold it back not have your feet on the ground as 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 per usual is ryan dunn trying to have a good attitude and like get thrown into the water was it him every time i look at bobby because i just have face blindness i think it was um but yeah he kept dragging his feet and that was then it would just go you know instead of Yeah. I think the chair was too heavy. Yeah. I think they weren't able to get the like propulsion because the chair was like a clunky like airplane chair. Or it something. should have been like a folding chair. Yeah. What they were trying to do should have taken them no time to set up. It <laughs> should have been very easy to accomplish. <laughs> Apparently, rumor has it, so they all the guys have different phobias, whatever. Um and uh Steve-O's big phobia is bungee cords. Yeah. Which is why they always write him in those, like, you know, crazy bungee stuff. Yeah. But I just think that was a bungee trick. And it's like, you look at that, and you're like, that's not as bad as half the things they do. Why is your thing bungees? Yeah. He says that at the end of Jackass 3. He's like, I don't know why this is what scares me the most. But it is. Interesting. I wonder what it is about it. Is it the actual, like, getting flung, or is it the actual, the, the mechanism itself? I mean, I'm scared of some shit that doesn't make sense. Snails. I'm makes no interested. sense. That, no, that I think makes, we can trace that one. That makes all the sense. That makes, that makes, uh, let me, let me validate both of you. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Can it's I? crunchy and slimy at the same time. It's crunchy time. and slimy. Uh, <laughs> can I comment for a second on... Uh, Danger Aaron, one of the last things we saw, (laughs) I didn't know. (sighs) There's a few jackass guys that it just, it just doesn't really come together for them. (laughs) And I didn't know that he was going for something more specific. I literally didn't know until Bobby told us that he is trying to be like an evil Knievel, like Danger Aaron is his uh, title. And he's oh. like he's was like in um in a in a like a a tracksuit or or a jumpsuit and that's like his look and his thing. 
I think they hate him because they give so him too. the worst the tooth connected to the car like they oh, give him yeah. the scariest shit yeah they know he's thirsty but him and um and, and Preston they like they they it's like I think they're the two like punching bags and Dave England and yeah and Dave England and Dave England Dave England and Danger Aaron are unfortunately an odd couple it's two guys who were very good at snowboarding. Very good. They, I mean, the bungee jumping is scary and it is funny. I mean, uh, uh, pogo, pogo stick. stick. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> they just don't. You know, one of the things that I was reading in, in Steve-O's autobiography um, was that all of them except for Knoxville and Chris were actually completely unable to speak to the camera mm. due to anxiety when they started filming the show. So one of the reasons that Johnny Knoxville is head honcho in charge is that he's a charismatic personality. And, one and of the reasons, hot and gorgeous. Sure, I mean, there's some could say there's more than one reason. <laughs> um, but <laughs> also Chris, like, who doesn't really do anything dangerous or to hurt himself, he's just charismatic and he's funny. And um, hot and gorgeous and, as well. And hot and gorgeous as some well. Some think. Um, not my type. <laughs> But point being that I think Danger Aaron and um, Dave England somehow never found a personality on camera. And and this is where I disagree with you. (laughs) The ability (laughs) Dave England has to shit on command. Yeah, I know. Yes. That's a skill. You don't need a personality. It's like when hot girls don't need to develop a personality. If you have but a he prodigal he was skill. A little kid. He didn't want to be the guy who shits. He wanted to be the guy who snowboards. And they had to find this other thing. <laughs> That's part of life, though, is accepting is accepting what you're good at and, and sticking with it. If you can shit on command and that's your thing, be the best yeah. at it. Follow you're, you're your right. bliss. Amen, you're right. sister. <laughs> he also really knows how to scream. Yeah. When he gets hurt, the way that that, the noises that come out of that man, they're beautiful. Yeah. No, everybody fills their role. I think everybody fills their role. And I, I guess I, I guess I just never really thought about it that much that it is, it is kind of like an evil Knievel thing. (laughs) And none of us thought about it that much. (laughs) But I feel bad. I feel bad. I feel bad. Danger, Aaron. Because I know what it's like to not have. Like I tell jokes all the time, and people just that just fall flat on their face. Yeah. And you're not actually even literally falling flat on your face. No, I I'm usually sitting. I'm usually seated under a lot of blankets, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> rocking back back and forth. But I did. I liked to see. I liked to see Danger, Aaron doing his pogo stick and a crowd of people gathering and cheering for him as he goes down the fountain and a little kid like putting his tongue in the camera like these are nice things it's also it's you know what that's a weird one to have it because that is in many ways that's the most impressive stunt we watched tonight like he pogo sticked through a fountain it was acrobatic yeah it's like the it's the only one that really yeah, it's the only one that really required talent. <laughs> yeah, it was Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. yeah, like actual talent. I mean, like, of course, Johnny Knoxville is talented, but but bikini isn't like a feat of strength. You're not like, like, pogo, do it, riding a pogo stick through a fountain is dangerous. Yeah. That should have been at the top of the show. But he's not charismatic. He's not charismatic. And they hate yeah. him. And they fucking, and they fucking hate, hate that him. guy. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing with Cirque du Soleil. There's people who have been training to do that shit since they were six who are the acrobats. And then there's the clowns who are paid just as much and they just come out and they take a, they fart and they leave and everybody claps. Exactly. You know, and as three people who could get that job, I think that we can agree that the world is unfair. And I'm begging on my hands and knees for that job. I'm begging. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I auditioned for Cirque du Soleil when I was... um, 17. Did you really? Yeah. Did you get close at all? I got medium. And then they told me that clowns age like fine wine and to come back later. And I don't want to go back. So. (laughs) I think you should when you're really, really old. When I'm really old. (laughs) When it's it's like it should be the last thing you do. 
We should all go together. Yeah. Oh, can I just say one other thing that I heard about Jackass? They're filming the fourth one now, and something that they were going to do. Did we talk about this before? Was that they were uh, originally when they were going to be shooting it last year? They were going to go to Burning Man and put oh, out God. put out the Burning Man <laughs> as firefighters. Oh. That set is riddled with the coronavirus. <laughs> Of course it is. Of course it ever said. <laughs> this set is probably. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a shame that they didn't get to do that. And I'll be thinking about that forever. That is That would have been the best. I mean, they should just delay the movie until they can actually do that, to be honest. There's going to be so many stupid fucking... There's going to be so many, like, Burning Man type things after coronavirus is, like, done or whatever. Like, it's going to be... Festivals are going to be on a rise. There'll be plenty of opportunity to prank. Before we wrap up, we should we should do one of our segments with Sarah. I think uh, I my vote would be Jack Jack Astrology. Oh yeah! Whoa. Oh! <laughs> All right, before we go. So I'll explain it. Do you want to? Because you're, I think you're the the Jack Astrologer. I'm, I am just a student. Oh, um, I've never been up against somebody who knows this much about Jackass. I'm gonna. I think that's why. I think that's why this is a good time to do this segment. This is basically it's like astrology. Um, it's just as real as astrology too. Uh, we give you your your rising sign and and your ascended sign. Uh, based on you know uh, what characters from the show, characters, what act performers from the show you're most like. Jesus Christ! Gotta Love record it. these earlier. In I the already day. have an idea in my mind. <laughs> hmm. So where do we land? Well, for reference, Vera, you're a Stevo with a uh, Spike with Spike rising. Yes. Ooh, this is a hard one. And what are you again? Where did we land on with you? Um, Knoxville, yeah, Knoxville with Bam, Knoxville rising. Bam rising. I gave myself my favorite ones. <laughs> but that's that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's this is interesting because let's see. This is a lot of pressure. I'm sorry to do no, this. No, 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 I, no, 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 no. no. Because, Sarah, you have a lot of humility. And thank you for that. And thank you for saying that. <laughs> if there's one thing Sarah Squirm's known for. <laughs> I see, like, a lot of beautiful humility in you. And uh, it's hard. It, this is actually really hard. I, I have an idea of what I am, so I'm curious. Okay, so go ahead. You want me to say first? What I, you, you first. No. <laughs> in my in my heart of hearts, I don't know if this is true, but I would think that I'm a Chris Pontius, Wee Man Rising, Dave England Moon. See that is that funny is... little dan- funny little dances and funny little outfits. Yeah, Wild Boys. Yep. That is uh, Wee Man Rising. I'm a little demon. Yeah, that's how I express myself. As well. and then my yep. my emotional moon base is rooted in the scatological. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, that's why I'm glad that I didn't say anything, because I was going to say the exact same thing. Uh, exactly. Wow. It, it, it reeks <laughs> off of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's really no other way. I think that could have went. It's beautiful to Absolutely. talk with someone who knows themselves so well. Thank you you kind of gotta now. Thank I don't you. think people really have a choice anymore. <laughs> it's sink or swim. It's sink or swim now. <laughs> self awareness is not going to is not going to or no self awareness is not going to take you as far as it used to. I think. I hope so. <laughs> well, um, on that though, thank you so much for zooming in to talk to us about. Do you have anything you would like oh, yeah. to like to where? Where can people find you? Are you working on anything cool right now? 
People can find me at Sarah Squirm on everything. I'm not working on anything. I have nothing going on. I have nothing to plug. And everyone, please watch my videos. Because um, guess what? They're guess what people are doing? Not watching them. So let's get those <laughs> eyeballs on there. Watch video. Watch those videos. Watch they're those really videos. They're, watch those videos. Yeah. And uh, I I have a plug. Well, I have two plugs, actually. Sarah Squirm is in The People's Joker, <gasps> which I wish I could give a release date, um, but it's really settling in how much work there is. <laughs> uh, but soon, to tide everybody over, uh, very soon I will be launching an all-new podcast uh, with my old brand, Hot Topics. <laughs> it's called Hot Topics with Vera Drew, uh, brought to you by Buco de Beppo. Uh, and it's basically going to be my my diary while I finish making uh, The People's Joker, which is my legal comic book movie, which Sarah Squirm plays Lauren Michaels in. Very cool. <laughs> I'm also a Lauren Michaels rising. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's not where your humility comes from, though, for sure. <laughs> um, that's in Wee Man. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We got to try to get, we got to work through, we got to start reaching out to the to, to the jackass people. Because uh, I want to talk to Wee Man. I want to talk to, I mean, they, it all feels within our reach. I want to know what Danger Aaron was hoping for. <laughs> We'll find a way to word it that doesn't. (laughs) That's what I'm going to say. As usual, I have a Patreon now. Uh, If you subscribe to it, you'll get to see a lot of really personal, uncomfortable videos that I make. And also I'll respond to your messages. um, And the money all goes to us making more episodes of The Ember Night Show, which I'm very excited about. So you can find that link at patreon.com slash Ember Night. It's pretty easy to use a search engine. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited you're going to be finishing up the, the Me series. Too. I think it feels right. It feels like the right move. And this was lovely. Thank you so much, Sarah Squirm. So Thanks for having me. Uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. Talk to you soon. <laughs>